wasn't pretty, but they got the job done and they stopped the bleeding like Joaquin Gage said he wanted to see. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Oil Stream Post Game Show on ESD. Tom Gazzola, Joaquin Gage, live in studio as we break down the Oilers' victory over the Anaheim Ducks. YouTube Trev in the green room and Zach to come running the board on tonight's show. Five to three is the final. Wasn't great. Didn't start out particularly well. The Oilers gave up the lead a few times. They worked their way back into things. Good second period. And then in the third, Gager, they kind of took over, even though Lucas Dostal had to come in and did some great work for the Ducks. Amazing couple saves from from Dostal there. Yeah. Coming in late in the third, um, trying to get the win against the Edmonton Oilers. Very... Uh, I don't know. Were they showcasing Dostal? We were, we were discussing. I was saying, if I'm a team and you're looking at the goalie market... Maybe try to find a way to pluck Lucas Dostal out of Anaheim. I, I said this when we were talking. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I haven't watched him on a regular basis by any means. But the games that he's played against the Edmonton Oilers, he's been more than sufficient yes. as a uh, as to solidify that backup role. Who knows what's in the future for him? But right. uh, great saves, unreal. So and. What are you going to do with that Leon shot? That was that was ridiculous. Uh, he rips it at the guy's ear. Yeah. Even though it was like a hard knuckler. And those, as a goalie, those are the ones when, uh, and when I'm teaching goalies and stuff, those are the ones that I try to teach them to, to catch. It's easy to, like, to do the windmill. Yeah. It's the ones close to your body to catch and control. That's what you really have to work. So those, those in tight shots. And, um, yeah, you're, I mean, no one's stopping that thing. I don't think you could have had... Gibson in there too. I think Leon's still scoring. Yeah, I, I mean, going post to post and trying to get your glove up and still be tall, that's a tough one. Yeah. That's a tough ask. If you can pull it off, phenomenal. I'm just saying, Lucas Dostal, from what we've seen of him against the Oilers, pretty darn impressive, and maybe he's going to be uh, a pretty good starter down the road at some point. We shall see. All right, get in on the conversation, 780-218-9999. Let us know what you thought of the overall performance. Obviously, I would think oil country is happy with the result. Although, you can't please them all, Gager, as no. we know, in and around these parts. But uh, let us know your thoughts. Uh, and if you haven't already, tagged that text with your name. Although, we have the database now, which is fantastic compared to the <laughs> old spot where that wasn't the case. Although, I have noticed, Gager, a lot more new texters in the text line. Have you? Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, I, I, I'm always leery about texting. I, I usually try to add a little lightness to the text line oh, if you it's do. bad. I've yeah, so it's it's personal. But no, it's good it's good to see. I and I've I, I have actually noticed um you know, we have our, our regulars in the nasty chat, but um s some new people in there discussing others. I it's great. I, I give myself a lot of credit tonight. As you should Tommy. Um just you know, realizing that maybe I was needed in studio for the Oilers to win. I love it. What a pleasant <laughs> surprise. We had Zach to come. You two, Trav, crushed a delicious donair tonight. I couldn't do it. I was full. And then you're like, hey, you guys watching in studio? We're like, yeah, come on. He came down. This is great. This is great. A good Friday night here at EST. And uh, we've already got the nasty chat going strong, as always, if you're watching on our YouTube channel. Hit the thumbs up. Like, as a courtesy, you take off your shoes when you come in the door to a house party, when you come into the show, smash that thumbs up. Or if you forget to and you walk all over the place with your shoes on on the way out, you know, you say, sorry, I wore my shoes. We appreciate a thumbs up on the way out, if that makes sense. If that makes sense. I mean, I'm Thank wearing you. my slippers right now, right? So, well, yeah. you're at home. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, I saw this from Soap Kirk said, uh, EST parlay hit. What a night. Love it. If you got in on that action on Cool Bet, uh, you're cashing out with a little extra cha-ching in your pocket. All right, let's get into the scoring summary as well as the game stats from this one. Camp Fowler opened up the scoring on the power play for the Ducks in the first period from Frank Vitrano and Adam Henrique. Uh, that goal, Gager, coming at 1840. Three guys in front of Calvin Pickard. It was just a shot to the far post. And it, I think, redirected off of, was it Warren uh, Fogel? Uh, Fogel stick, yeah. yeah. Great, Fogel. great play by um, Fowler to walk the line there. And uh, 
Great shot selection. I think even if it didn't hit Fogelsick, that was probably hitting the back of that. Three guys in front of you like that. I liked, uh, there's, a, there's a tendency to fall back in your net when you can't see like that. Um, Pickard held his ground for as long as possible, but again, that's just inside the post. Three and, bodies and, in yeah, front you're, of too. You got to get. Uh, you got to be lucky in those types of situations if you're going to stop it. Not a particularly great first period for the Oilers. A little sloppy, some mistakes, and then they give up the one on the PK. Uh, something they haven't done a lot of lately, and uh, Anaheim takes advantage. So we go to the second period. That's where Evander Kane wakes up. And I said, how many times did I say, look at that chemistry between him and Corey Perry and Leon Draisaitl. I said it facetiously too a few times, but. It was good to see, and they connected. Kane's got his 16th from Corey Perry, picking up his first yeah. point as a member of the Edmonton Oilers to even things up at 9-11. Uh, nice shot, too. Great play by Perry. If you're, you were a goalie, you're going back behind the net to play the puck. <laughs> he happened oh, to whack yeah. his stick out of Gibson's hand. Uh, like that's I not in, that's not interference. Corey Perry is accidentally on purpose. That's how. Always. And but when you look at it, we I watch it like we you saw it in slow mo. He was actually making kind of a play on the puck. So it was it was a gray area. First of all, where he um, lives. you know what uh, you got to expect a guy to sometimes slap your stick, and his goalie's going out there. It, uh, we don't we don't feel that type of pressure. You know, and and it was a, it was a great play. It, it was an unbelievable play that a lot of guys don't make. Um, where it's it's I, I don't think it's a penalty. Like Gibson's got to have a little bit better grip strength yep. in, in that situation. And and yeah, that tonight we saw some of Corey Perry that has driven other teams and other fan bases crazy for so long, uh, yep. and it, and to to our advantage. And it was a uh, a great shot by Kane to, to score the goal, too. Dare I ask the viewers and the listeners, after 19 years of hating him, <laughs> how good does that feel to see him do it for your team? Oh, that's, uh, yeah, that's like, a, that's like a nice warm shower after, a, yeah. you know, being in the wilderness for so long with Corey Perry's trash that you've waded through for, for a, almost a decade. It's, uh, yeah, People this lighting is, up cigarettes after that one. I, I'm and it's funny because I think we talked about it earlier, Tommy. Where when are we going to see that kind of? Is Corey Perry going to establish that presence against the the Golden Knights, right? right? And I I said today I think it was more. It, it's that fine line that he plays on that he realizes where he's at. But when you step over it, sometimes you you can draw that penalty. And when when it's so close like that, I think you. He's been on the the. The proper side, I would say, of that line so far. Yep. Tonight we saw him kind of lean over a little yes. bit, uh, but and it worked. It worked perfectly. It even up the score, and it was even up for all of twenty nine seconds <laughs> when Ryan Strom on a bad turnover in the Oilers zone uh, picks up his seventh from Leo Carlson and Adam Henrique, and that was you. We looked at the play. We said, you know, Vinny DeHarnay had more time, and he just tried to sweep it up the wall. And then I think it was uh, Ryan McLeod tried the backhander, no look into the middle, and that was yeah. like Carlson and Henrik, the quick touches to Stroman. He yeah, it. and you know I've I was I, we've I think everybody in the city has been talking about the progression of Vinny DRNA over the past couple of weeks, yep. especially against that game against the Knights. Um, we saw the shuffle with the D men. I think a lot of it is attributed to how his progression has gone over the last um, month and. Or so, but that was a key point where we saw maybe a little bit of the older DRNA when he first like get get this puck out yes. of here, get get rid of it. Not the the new style of make a play when you have the the opportunity. Yeah. There was ample time for him to to grab the puck and even you know that those are the types of situations where you shoulder check, make sure and. It was a case where he just wanted to get rid of it. Yep. Ends up, and then you start scrambling, right? So the really great defensemen, when they make a mistake like that, they they recognize the play and get themselves back into a situation to cover it. Right. And you saw him kind of a little bit over anxious. Oh, I did something wrong. Not just kind of okay. Let's let's survey the situation here, and uh, it ends up in the back of that. Great goal by Strom. I mean, kind of pumped to hear the song. Maybe if Dusty plays it, but. 
Um, yeah, it's a, it, it was a mistake, but he totally redeemed himself later in the game. Yes, he would totally redeem himself. Uh, Evander Kane would also help out uh, later in the period at 12.51. Kane picks up his second of the night, 17th of the season, from Leon Dreisaitl and Brett Kulak. And you said to me after that one, this guy scores from distance in the National Hockey League. And I think, you know, we forgot about that when Kane was going through a stretch where the goals weren't there, the points weren't easy to come by. But twice tonight, he reminded us of that capability. Yeah, and that's a, it's a skill that not many NHLers have. To beat an NHL goaltender from distance is very, very difficult. Uh, and he can score... Like he he plays in the hard areas, but he also possesses a shot that's it's difficult to pick up for uh, from distance, and it comes off so quickly. Uh, great shot selection, you know. You're putting it kind of just oh, low. low off the body, below the glove, above the pad. Very again, those are that's what you try to teach young. Go- those are the saves you, that you want them to make because they're stoppable, but they're very difficult too. Right. So um, great game. By Kane. Good to see him get back on the scoreboard. I think YouTube Trev, after he finally got some of that Donaire down his uh, gullet, that uh, he said, yeah, this guy scores in bunches, <laughs> just like his Donaires. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he actually ate that Donaire like an expert. Like, he's been living in Edmonton for the last <laughs> dozen years. But it was just his third Donaire ever, and I was very, very impressed with his ability to uh, unwrap and eat along the way. Minimal spillage. From the little baggie that collects the donair juices. Can I say he's he's a very considerate kid too? He like he he stood behind us eating because he didn't want to. I had to look at it. It's uh, a tight wrap. Uh, yeah, but I I said, come on, kid, come sit down. It's fine. Yeah, it's all right. Exactly. You're making me nervous. Third period. <laughs> uh, he's saying something. Third period. Ryan Strom would give the lead back to the Ducks. Uh, his eighth of the year. Second of the night, great shot on the power play again. So the Oilers give up two on the PK. Vetrano and Fowler, the assist. That one coming at 320. But the Oilers would grind away after getting absolutely robbed by Lucas Dostal. Zach Hyman couldn't miss on the setup from Connor McDavid to get his 31st of the season at 841 to even things up. A brilliant play by McDavid, who just kind of started to do McDavid things again. Yeah, just, you know, when he starts doing that kind of McDavid, all eyes are drawn up on him. He sucks people people to him. And I I don't know if that puck would have just... I think it was going going in regardless, but good to see Hyman because he was robbed earlier from this call. Great save by Dostal before that, but Hyman gets his revenge. 3-3. Then on the order's power play, Leon Dreisaitl at 10-09, the one-timer... They had great opportunities on that power play, and it took a few before uh, that seam opened up and McDavid hits Dreisaitl for the goal. Bouchard with the good keep in there, his 33rd assist of the season. Bouchard, to his credit, much better tonight than he was against the Vegas Golden Knights in Vegas on Tuesday. So I was giving him a hard time, I feel like rightly so, on Tuesday. Much better tonight, and uh, that gave the Oilers the lead. They did not look back at 18.50. Kane... The empty netter, he saw the opportunity there, the little chip ahead from Derek Ryan, good defensive play. McDavid, the secondary assist. McDavid's 50th assist of the season, by the way, Gager. Kane's 18th (laughs) goal. Derek Ryan's sixth assist of the season. 5-3 Edmonton, that is your final. Shots on goal, 32-27 in favor of the Oilers. Face-off percentage, 52.9% to 47.1 in favor of the Oilers. The PK, 0 for 2 tonight, the power play. One for two. Hits 23-17 in favor of Anaheim. Block shots, 13 for the Ducks, 12 for the Oilers. Giveaways officially, 11 for the Oil, 6 for the Ducks. Takeaways, 6 for the Oil, 5 for the Ducks. If you're the Oilers and you're walking away from that game tonight with a 5-3 victory, even though it is the 30th place Anaheim Ducks, what do you think the uh, chatter and discussion and feel in general is around that room? Um... Well, when you when you play, when you're a really good team, you're considered to to be a favorite to do something special. You go up against another team that you know the 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 reigning champions. There's a level of you know you you get up for those games. Yeah. There's there's an intensity level that you achieve. Like you're 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 anxious for these. You go and then the next night you're playing the thirty thirtieth place team in the league. There's there's a little bit of an emotional letdown. Right. right? So with some th- frivolity mixed in. Yeah. Between games, <laughs> yeah, there was there was probably some uh some beverages had it uh, in between. Why not? Yeah. But anyway, the 
it, it what you what we're seeing with the Edmonton Oilers being able to rein that back and and get their game back to a level that can that can succeed in the NHL. That's that's impressive. Like cuz they're you can say the Ducks probably had a one of their best games of the year. You right. know, they, this is a game where they they could have won and the Oilers got it to a level and uh and and dropped the hammer and and blew by him again. It's 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 just the sign of a very very good mature team that knows certain how to how to manage the game in certain situations and come out with a victory and i've i've been on those teams i've played against those teams they're frustrating to play against because i'm you know the the if we could go into both locker rooms and look at the the end results like the oilers are like okay we did it that's good we, you know maybe we got to do this but the you look at the ducks dressing and they're like what do we have to do to beat this team right you know like they what more can we do? You know, we got our goalies making huge saves. We we got good contributions throughout the whole lineup, but we still can't. We're still so far away from from being a competitive team. I think so. Um, good on the Oilers. They're getting everyone's best game. Um, I, that was an enjoyable kind of progression. Obviously, not the first, mm-hmm. but again, I wasn't here for most of the first, and then they picked it up after that. Yeah, it wasn't a great first period. Much better second period. They still gave away the lead a couple of times, and then uh, cleaned things up. And uh, got down to business in the third. This text comes in. No name on it. Just says, saw a lot of November Oilers in that one, except for Pickard. Woof. No, no, I mean, look, that's a goalie's job. When you go into a visiting team's arena, you're you're going to get their best first 10. Like, uh, usually yeah, the home no. team's got some juice off the hop. Like, you constantly hear the phrase like uh, weather the first 10 minutes and you know and, and go from there and that's what you know it wasn't the Oilers best by any means but no, it, it that not. that's what you that's what good NHL goaltending does for your team in certain spots or certain periods for the game where the other team's pushing um the goalie locks the door or and, and shuts the other team down. We saw it on both sides, mm-hmm. I think, tonight. When the Oilers started to push, we saw Gibson make some greats, uh, have a good series of saves. Dostal at the beginning of the third, unbelievable saves to keep uh, to keep his team in it. That's just, you're not going to dominate a team for a whole 60 in this league. There's too much parity at this point. Um, this is where good goaltending gets you through those lulls. Got some really key saves from Calvin Pickard, but I understand some of the sentiment. I mean, if you're looking at that one and going, man, they're not going to. Well, actually, if they do play like that against L.A., I don't think they win the game, even though the L.A. Kings have been struggling. Uh, Dirty Curdy says, uh, Sugar Cane, Connor, and Pick saved the day. Binney with a playoff-like block to set up the empty netter. He also redeemed himself there, yes. Uh, sloppy, but got it done. Let's see if the Kings bring out the best. Nobby, line blender, almost backfired. Dirty Curdy. Uh, Nick from St. Albert, Texan, says, Evander says to the Ducks, I'm getting a hat trick, <laughs> and there is nothing you can do about it. Uh, Atif is very optimistic, says, Tommy, a new streak as this started. Let's see how long it lasts for. It was really cool to see all the Oiler fans in Anaheim. Do you know what happened to John Gibson? Atif, all I know is he uh, suffered a lower body injury, and this is something that keeps popping up with Gibson. Yeah. And at this point in his career, at 30 years of age, a bad sign because I think Jack was talking about it on the broadcast. This has kind of started to become something that's more, unfortunately, consistent for a guy. Like Gager, as a goalie in your body changing from a young man to a, just a average aged man middle-aged man i mean he's 30 now put a lot of miles on him early in his career yeah. uh how is that for a goalie I, I guess your experiences um the the style of play a lot of it i think depends on genetics a little bit okay. i've seen i've heard of young junior goalies having to have hip surgery Right, because of the movement, the the structure, the the force. Like if you take your body weight and multiply it by two, that's the force that most goalies are are using to go down into that butterfly position. Okay. Right. So just imagine that. How many times during a game? Fifty, sixty. So just on your joints, and not everyone's built the same ways. Uh, John Gibson is a very good 
positional goalie that that when he's in that butterfly position, he's able to 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 move quite effectively. Mm-hmm. I think so. It's wear and tear, and he, unfortunately, he's been on a team where he's had to do that a lot. So right, um, the 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 amount that he has to exert every game to be successful, I'm sure that uh, that's played a little bit of a part into it. Yeah, and of course, age. You know, you, the only race you don't win is that one against Father Time. Mm-hmm. And it's unfortunate because he's been a great goalie for a long time. There's been always been talks about him getting out or something. But, again, it, I think it's a little bit of that that carry price. Not the same type of contract, but it's just – it becomes – a team can't take that on. Right. Well, and the body breaking down, like Ryan Miller was kind of the same way. Yeah. Heavy workload early in his career. Outstanding, yeah. outstanding. Played some – Great hockey on some great teams, and then it just it seemed like his body, 31, 32 years old, and it was just like, boom. Yeah. What yeah. happened to the old Brian Miller? And it just it was never the same. Kent in Red Deer says, was Fogel benched late? And I'm looking at his time on ice. He had six shifts in the first, five in the second, four in the third. And his last shift came at the 1930 mark, so he played the last 30 seconds of the game. Uh, before that, he was on at the 11.34 mark, and uh, then 6.56. So There were some power plays in there, too. There, right? were, so. there were some power plays. So he did not get benched, but uh, he wasn't out there for a, a regular rotation, I suppose is the best way to describe that. The third line wasn't as effective. I mean, there's there was some subtle changes there. I, I still would – I want to see that line a, a little bit more, but – Again, it was, a, it was a game where the big boys stepped up when it mattered most. Here's one. I'll float your way. Comes in from Calgary Glenn, who uh, also photoshopped a photo of Corey Perry's head on a worm and sent it in. Very good Photoshop, Calgary Glenn, who adds, I did not like the Oilers' D-zone coverage tonight. It reminded me of early season Oilers, letting those cross-seam passes get through and not getting sticks in lanes. The refs were on the Oilers' side tonight. That's from Calgary Glenn, um, the the seams that were being exposed, exposed a little bit. Yeah, what's that from? Yeah, no. I again, I just think the there when you go against a, one of the top teams to one of the lower teams, just the the overall intensity level. It obviously wasn't there at the at the beginning of the game. Right, not there in the first. Um, it did ramp up when when the game mattered more. Uh, I. I I'm not going to be critical of their defensive structure in that first period because it was throughout the whole lineup except for Pickard um, was, was on it. Uh, I think we'll see a much more disciplined defensive structure against the Kings because they, they'll know that they're going to have to eat, have to have something like that. Yes. If you're the coaching staff and you see how the Ducks were able to work things around in the first period and then you know have some moments in the third period – um, do you revert back to the old D pairings, even though you, this was a, an experimental game with the D pairings tonight? No, I, I don't think so. I think I, you know, you've, you've, you started essentially another winning streak. And what do we say? You don't mess with a winning streak, right? So mm-hmm. you, you won the game. Um, tomorrow, tomorrow night's obviously going to be a lot different than tonight with a Kings team. New coach, there's going to be yes. the new coach bump. Uh, a team that's been struggling, trying to get things back on track. Um, a team that they see that's ahead of them now that they want to track down and 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 solidify a, a playoff spot in the Pacific Division. So, again, the the overall intensity level of the whole entire game is going to be it's going to be completely different than uh, than tonight was. So, um, I think as a coach, Tommy, when when Nabla comes in, uh, I know I, I I would think he would say something like, you know what. It wasn't our best, no. But it, but it was. It was definitely. I liked the progression of where we got to by the end of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, let's just make sure that the start of our game starts like the fifteen minute mark of the third, rather than the the first few minutes of the first. Fair point. Uh, into the nasty chat we go. If you want to hit us up there and just joined us, uh, let us know your thoughts on the Oilers five three victory. In Anaheim tonight, stopping the bleeding. That was something that Gager said on the pregame show. The Oilers had not done that after yeah. losing a game. Yeah. They'd always, there'd always be another one. Their shortest losing streak of the year was two games right off the hop at the start of the season. Then they beat Nashville. 
then they rattled off, I think it was three straight losses, and then they had uh, a bunch more where it was just like, boy, are these guys ever going to stop losing? And then even when they started winning games, they would lose, then they'd lose three, and then they'd go on a crazy tear, like an eight-game winning streak, then they lost three, then they win 16 in a row. So tonight, it's a, it, Yeah, it's, it's the mark of a good team, yeah. and you don't lose two in a row. So you get that winning feeling back in your room. It's, it's perfect because that... Yeah, as we saw at the beginning, that stuff that stuff grows like a bad virus. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. Uh, nasty chat, X-Ray J saying, 13 injury pulls in the last two years for Gibson. Yikes, JCD780 says, I thought Miller played till he was like 40. Yeah, but not as a, a, a true starter like no. he was before and never at that same level. He did last quite a while, bounced around, ended up in Vancouver, uh, was with St. Louis briefly. I feel like I'm forgetting another spot along the way there, but uh, it was never like it was when he was with Buffalo at the peak of his career. Yeah, he really no. started to feel yeah. it around 05, 06. Remember yeah. he went to the conference final against uh, yeah. Carolina? I mean, well, who can forget the uh, 2000 the Olympics, right? Yeah, like he was he was he was the best USA goaltender. Like, he so was unreal. yeah, JCD 780. He did play till he was 40, but it was never Ryan Miller. No. Buffalo Sabres, right? Rarely you see that. Well, I guess Mike Smith is the only one that you really you could say that. Wasn't he a late bloomer, though? Remember that he came in with some, so. some clout with the lightning. It didn't really work out. Then, then Dallas. he had to go down, and he was with Dallas, and it didn't really work out. And then it really started to take when he got to Arizona. Sean Burke, you know, that uh, he seems to revitalize a lot of guys. And he does well with that big body structure. And I was always, like, Mike Smith was a fantastic goalie. I won't take, but I just think there was a lot of untapped potential where he sat so far back in his net. It was a big guy playing small. Uh, I had a good chat with Dustin Schwartz last <laughs> two, or Monday or something like that uh, in Vegas. Oh, yeah? And he would talk about the differences of, like, how Smith was like tight against the post and he would always have ankle issues because his style was to get hard on the post with his foot and it would create oh, that really? impact. And then like Koskinen was so tall that he would tuck his body in the post and that created problems, especially short side where he got victimized a bunch of times. Yeah. And, and, and it was like the evolution of how guys play the post now. And now guys with the pads and the way they're designed is more... Uh, or less demanding on the lower half of the body, and hmm. the way they're the the, the ergonomically arranged, correct, like ergonomically the, correct, the, yeah, where you like, can get yeah. to the post and you're not smashing your mm -hmm. your foot and ankle into the post anymore. It's evolved to that point now. I, I was trying to comprehend it, and I can. Kind of, but I feel like you would probably understand what Schwartz he was describing. Yeah, I, hopefully I'd, I'm doing that right. I'd love to see like the video of him breaking that down, and uh, and especially between the two goalies, that would be quite fascinating to me. But you know, I I, I always felt that uh, certain goalies, the way that they play, and looking at Calvin Pickard tonight, like he's very uh, the way he plays is he, he saves his energy quite well to me like there's not a lot of extra movement right. in his game you know when you you talked about mike smith how he would like go to the post hard and everything Smash like it. just there was points in the game where you don't really need to exert that amount of force on your body right so calvin pookert is very efficient in in the way that he plays great saves i i really hope that the whole uh narrative of the oilers needing a really good backup goaltender. Like they're not Calvin Pickard has solidified himself as a guy that if something goes wrong, you're going to get good goaltending. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not elite level, but what can what team has elite level backup goaltending at this point? Not many when you look around the league. Boston. Okay, that's Boston. What's is there another one? Um it's tough like Honestly, it, may, maybe you could say Calgary, but they I have know so that's many. the other one I was thinking. But it's they still have it, it, Calgary is kind of Edmonton a few years ago, where one was playing good, the other one wasn't. Right, right. So not, they don't have both guys going at the same right. time. Yeah, Boston, I could say that's a pl that's a true platoon, even with Lindmar. excellent, it, it, yeah, excellent. Where y you don't care who's in, but right. I think I, I I would be okay. Obviously, it would be upsetting, but. 
um, I would be okay if something were to happen to Skinner and get injured, that at least you know you're getting a guy that's that's capable of making big saves at crucial times during the game. And it seems to me, Gager, talking to Calvin Pickard, watching him, observing, hearing things about him from others that yeah. have played with him, coach him, he's pretty calm yeah. in tough situations. He's an older guy. He's 31 now. He's been through a lot. He was supposed to be like the next guy for the avalanche. In Pan, yeah. stuck with it, got some opportunities. Detroit, I think, uh, where else was he? Toronto briefly. Mm -hmm. And then uh, signed as the third stringer here in Edmonton. Now he's yeah. a solidified backup. Great job. Team. Yeah. Great job. Stuck with it. 780-218-9999 or into the nasty chat if you're watching on our YouTube channel. 5-3, the orders beat the Anaheim Ducks. They stopped the bleeding. They get the win after the loss to Vegas. Was not pretty. A bad first period. Better second period. And then uh, got it done in the third. They do give up a couple on the penalty kill. Something that hasn't happened in a while. They also give up three goals. Uh, Gager, I have to look that up when the last time that the Oilers gave up three in a game was. I've got the game-by-game -game summary here. I mean, we were talking about them losing for the first time since December 19th. Yeah. The other night, and that December 19th game was a loss to the New York Islanders. The last time they gave up three in a game was to the Rangers on December 22nd when they won 4-3. Those were the back-to-back -back comeback nights over New Jersey and New York. And I got to give a shout out to JCD780 and Blake Roberts. They they did mention the Rangers as a as a good platoon system. I'd have to agree with you guys. That's, uh, that's Shesterkin. Shesterkin and Quick. And Quick, they, yeah. They, and quick. But, I mean, no one expected Quick to be playing like 10 years ago Quick. Right. <laughs> and, and there have been those around the league that have said, boy, who had Jonathan Quick like – Helping salvage the Rangers yeah, when they were yeah, having tough, yeah, yeah, yeah. tough times this year. Crazy. Like, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and that was the game. I think that was the first time Quick, uh, what was it, lost in regulation all season. Yeah. He was like 9-0-2 at that point, and the Oilers, with the come-from-behind win, busted that nice yeah. little stretch. Yeah, he was he unbelievable at the start. He yeah. played good here, too, for the Hall of Fame game. Like he, made, he made some really good saves in that second period where – could have turned the tide. It's uh, I've always I've uh, I've enjoyed watching Jonathan Quick play. Uh, a true competitor and uh, likely Hall of Famer for sure. Yeah. I'm going back to that November game against the Rangers, and yeah, they got shut out three zip in that yeah, one. Yeah, it was on Doug Wait night. On Doug and Charlie Waite. Huddy. Yeah, How fun night it? though. Yeah, I bet the it alumni was room was probably hopping. Yeah. I uh, I I got to, I walked into a room, one of the theater boxes, and there was Doug Wait. Bill Guerin, Cujo was there, Kelly Buckberg. I got some good pictures. So that was a that was a, that the was one a, you posted was excellent. That was fun. That was fun. Seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine to the Liquid Beaver we go. He says, "Hey Tommy, Liquid Beaver checking in from the Honda Center. Uh, oil Country travels wow. so well. There was a mini Edmonton in yeah. uh, Anaheim tonight for sure, and uh, ran into so many people in Vegas that were like, we 'We're going to Anaheim. Are you guys coming?' <laughs> and I'm like, oh, it was just Vegas, and they're like, okay, well, it's gonna be a great time." Uh, so Liquid Beaver adds, uh, checking in from Honda Center. Glad they won, but it was not a Picasso. I did not like the D pairs. What's up with that? Gage, you kind of talked about it a little bit. Uh, it was kind of like feeling each other out, getting the best game from the Ducks, who were rested, although not that rusty in the first period. And uh, maybe the Oilers shaking off a little bit of the cobwebs for yeah. a couple days between games. And I, I said, I think you have to, you have to get – it's you mentioned you saw these pairings. Sometimes they mix them up in practice, right? Yes. Doing do. it in practice is one thing. Doing it in a game is completely different. And we saw, um, I think it was Calvin Pickard in the third period, kind of give the puck away there or keep it moving, right? So mm -hmm. lack of communication right there. That's maybe a little bit of not reading the play, maybe not knowing, like communicating with your D-men. Um, there was other instances I saw where there was just a little bit of what seemed like looked like a few guys that hadn't played in in, in high intensity situations before, and you're going to need that. Like sometime one of the, these days, unfortunately, one of these guys is going to be out for for a period, did this a game, on a knock on wood, what, whatever. Fans, right? Yeah. Hopefully, it's not long. But you, you need to build chemistry with other players, so especially on the defensive side. Forwards, it's a little bit more plug-and-play. Defensemen, there's two, like, 
uh, hook and ladder drill. Like, you know, you're getting in position. You see the continuity between, just look at Ekholm and Bouchard right now, where they don't even have to look, you know, when they get the puck in certain so situations coming out. They know their partner is going to be here. Right. You know, so that's what you want throughout your whole defensive core. Um, it's not easy to do. But I, I do like, I, I'd have to disagree. I like the fact that they, they mixed up the D pairings a little bit. They survived it. Uh, we'll read three texts, and we're going to go into the Oilers locker room down in Anaheim. Displaced UConn simply says, that wasn't a pretty win, but good teams win ugly games. Mike in Thunder Bay staying up late for this one. Says, Pickard had all systems engaged, kept the Oilers in the first two periods. Then the KD Perry line came in like a firework. <laughs> Nice. The team finally woke up from their nap in the third. It wasn't the prettiest win, and Oilers look pretty pathetic at times. But a win's a win, and we all go to bed happy, says Mike in Thunder Bay. And then EA, I wholeheartedly agree with EA on this one. Can't play like that against LA, Tommy, from EA. Fair point. Clean it up for tomorrow against the Kings. Second half of a back-to-back. -back. Just the third back-to-back -back of the season for the Edmonton Oilers. Let's bring in Zach to come to tee up our first clips to get to. Yep, for the first clip, we got the German Gretzky, Leon <laughs> oh Dreisaitl. <boy. laughs> Here we go. We've seen it last fall, but it looked very, very focused on the power, last power play. It looked, you guys put together four scoring chances in a minute. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I would agree with that. Uh, our stats have been, I think, pretty good. So. Well, it hasn't carried <laughs> yeah, it away. Yeah, no, no, there's, our, our kill was, has, been, has been the main factor. But anyways, uh, yeah, no, it was, uh, it was a timely power play. Um, we created uh, a, lot of, a lot of looks and um, very sharp. Um, obviously needed that, so it's a big goal for us. Tell me about playing with Corey Perry and all the stuff that he brings and does as opposed to playing against him. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's nice to have him on our side. Um, I think he just is a master at um, you know playing the game within the game a little bit, right? Um, he's done it all his life, and top of that, um, you know, he makes, makes great plays with the puck. And um, yeah, it was a good good game for us as a line. I thought uh, something to build on for sure. And um, yeah. He's uh, he's been great for us so far. Had a nice run with like McLeod and Fogel, two faster guys. Now you have two maybe power forwards with you. What's what's it like to get kind of a different look? Uh, yeah, it's a different look, but I, I mean, I try to play my game no matter who I play with. Um, I think I'm uh, capable of, of playing with whoever I'm, I'm out there with, so um, not too worried about it. We get a lot of great players on this team that uh, can contribute and, and play in, in different roles and. Um, yeah, like I said, I, I thought we we uh, created some looks as a line and, and um, you know cashed in. So hopefully we can keep it up and, and continue to grow. Is that the secret sauce of this team? There's a lot of guys that could play in the top six. Lots of combinations. Um, you know, you could shape it uh, any way you want, really. Um, lots of lots of different guys that that are very comfortable in, in certain situations. So uh, it's a big plus for for a group. Does this team win without the play of Calvin Pickard, especially early in this hockey game? No, he, he gave us a chance to find our legs. Um, you know, uh, I thought he was he was outstanding again. Um, he's been he's been great for us all, all year and uh, made some some really really big stops for us to to find our legs early on. And um, yeah, I thought he was great. All right, there was Leon Drysaddle. Nice goal on the power play. Kind of pushing back a little bit, feeling good, but uh, overall happy with the win. Would you make a twenty nine? What he had to say about the team's win? No. Uh, Perfect. I mean, um, I mentioned before, you need your goaltender to bail you out sometimes. That's what Calvin Pickard did. Leon alluded to the fact he needed to find those legs that were dipped in some sort of substance over the last few days, I guess. And once that was... Uh, I love that power play, though. I, like, yeah. he mentioned the, the, uh, the ability to score when it mattered most with the power play. And I know it's been... Uh, a lot of people, I say, oh, what's happened to the power play? It's not working well. Look, it's still, I think it's, what, 26%? That it's still, it's, 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 it crept up to third in the league going into action tonight, and the PK was fifth going it, into yeah, action Yeah, I tonight. mean, that, it's, it's remarkable. When your special teams are, are clicking at that rate, it, it, it's unbelievable. It's the timing of it all. And, the, uh, I mean, we were sitting here watching that thing. I go, it's only a matter of time here. The, the three and, opportunities before that one were just <laughs> like, oh, did they not score? Oh, what a save. Oh, how did, 
and then yeah. I love when the the Oilers have that because they when they have the shot mentality like oh if something's there they they rip it because their puck retrieval afterwards is so good in the offensive zone it's almost like they're always going to get the puck back you know mm-hmm. it's not getting back down the ice and to have sustained pressure and finally Leon with that unbelievable shot you could see the 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 dejected look on the Ducks like. Their body language after that's like, oh my gosh! They tried you know? to do everything, yeah. and that's what uh, that's what it kind of I talked about that goal, yeah. at the in the in the pregame show is you. I would have liked to see them get the ducks to that type of body language earlier yes. in the game. Yes, yes, yes it yes. was later, um, uh, better late than never, and it was still accomplished. Um, but hey, like I'm reading in the nasty chat, yeah, it was it was ugly, but it sure. was. But it, that's what good teams do. You're not gonna be. A juggernaut all the time, but when it matters most, they they can uh, they can, they play the game within the game, like uh, like Corey Perry does uh, evidently, and they can get it done. Legs dipped in a fine age barreled agave, agave perhaps <laughs> barrel aged agave, barrel aged agave, yeah, something yeah. along those lines, or perhaps something uh, like a, a brown liqueur of some yeah. sort. Oh, I'm sure it was just delicious. It was, I, yeah, probably. Yeah. But uh, they, they shook that off and uh, managed to get the 5-3 win. Hit us up in the nasty chat if you're watching. and Smash that thumbs up button as well. We appreciate it as always. Tom Gazzola, Walking Gage with you here on the Oil Stream Post Game Show. Zach to come making sure everything's running smoothly. Uh, YouTube Trev also along for the ride. And you can also reach us via... The inbox, 780-218-9999. Zach to come. We have some more audio and video to get to from the Oilers locker room at the Honda Center. Who's up next, pal? We'll go with the guy who scored three goals tonight, Kane, who is able. Dry Settle and Corey Perry. I mean, yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, kind of like I referenced the other day, I played with Paris in a tournament. 12, 13 years ago, so, uh, you know, and obviously know how he plays, and um, got the job done tight. Tell me about Perry a little bit. Like, he's so greasy, and he's been doing it his whole career. What does that do for a team, a little bit of that? Yeah, I mean, he's, uh, yeah, he's another guy that kind of is able to play in the dirty areas, and and, uh, he enjoys it, and, um, you know, I think it, it creates havoc and it creates uh, space down low um, when you're attracting that much attention like he does down there. So, um, and he has a great set of hands that uh, he's able to make those type plays. So, um, great addition for our team. You guys should be an interesting line. I mean, you got a world class sentiment. You're a big guy shooting off the left side. He's doing his thing on the right side. There's a lot of elements on that line. A lot of stuff going on. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, obviously it was our first game uh, as a unit together and um, we'll see how long that goes and uh, just try to continue to build off of that and um, get more familiar with each other as, as we play more. Do you feed off that, Evander? Because, you, I mean, you, you play a pretty similar style to, to Corey too and the, like two guys that are playing yeah, the way, yeah. Yeah, it's nice, you know, just, uh, you know, I'm in there with Labushkin giving him some shots and next thing you know, <laughs> there's another guy in there uh, and Labushkin's disappeared all of a sudden and... So it's nice to have a little backup in the scrums. That's for sure. He knocks the stick out of uh, Gibson's <laughs> hands and you score. Uh, and the crowd's booing Corey Perry or that I. It was kind of priceless, actually. But so yeah. He does. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's a, he's a guy. Uh, those type of guys and those type of players, you know, they're tough to play against and you don't like doing it. Um, but you love having them on your side of the ice. So, uh, like I said, enjoyable. Double digit hat tricks for you in, in your NHL career, eight in the regular season, two in the playoffs you know as a little kid growing up in Vancouver did you ever think you'd kind of hear that before I mean that's a pretty sweet milestone I, yeah, I didn't even realize that um, you know there was nine years in the league I didn't have a hat trick so I was just hoping to get one at, at one point so uh, yeah you know it's obviously it's been uh, it's nice coming out of the break and, and getting on the board early and, and getting ready uh, for the second half of the season you've always been kind of a duck killer in this building you've scored a lot of goals here and I'm just wondering if a lot of that is just the way you play, shooting the puck a lot, you know, through speed, or just always trying to put it on net all the time. I I don't know. Um, 
Yeah, I, I remember my first playoff series was in this building. Um, so I think maybe that just maybe a little bit of that excitement of, of having your first playoff game uh, in a building like this was, was a lot of fun. And, um, you know, we were coming off a loss, so it was a big game and, and nice for us to get two points. All right, there is uh, Evander Kane shirtless, as he tends to do, talking about his hat trick uh, tonight in the 5-3 Oilers victory, uh, the KD Perry line. Fantastic. Brilliant. 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 Well done. Was that X-Ray J with that one? I, I don't know. I hope know. I'm giving credit uh, yeah. where credit is due. Or was it Tango? Fantastic. Remind me. Yeah, that was great. 780-218-9999. Morgan chiming in says, Gents, good game. Happy to see Kane get his third hat trick this year. Perry getting a point. Defense changes. Took a minute to find their flow. Thoughts on defense. Uh, Morgan with that one. You talked about it a tiny bit there, but it took them a little while to kind of yeah, yeah, they, adjust. It's going to take a longer, too, Tommy. It's it's not going to be complete in, an, in 60 minutes. Uh, sometimes getting thrust into the fire is where you really learn about, uh, you know, certain combinations that work and, and what works and what doesn't. I think tomorrow night uh, is going to be a not a trial by fire, but a, a little bit more of a, a of a test to see what these pairings can do and if uh, if they can withstand the the pressure of there's going to be moments when the you'll see some pushes from the kings. Yep. And see how uh, they bend and but not break. AZ with this one, a follow up on the defense question. It's interesting. It says, "Do you think this was a request by Holland for the deep pairings? It looked to me that they're trying to see if he can handle what CC does because week by week CC looks more and more on the outside." Maybe they're seeing if he is a legit upgradable piece. Before I go to you, I'm just going to say this. Going into the season, one of the things they did talk about was potentially upgrading Cody Cece. Watching him this year personally, I think he's been serviceable. And everything that they asked him to be quiet, no offense, has made mistakes. But I don't know if, if they're looking at him and going, he's terrible, we need to make an upgrade. I think if they can, they would. But... Gager, your thoughts on how CC has been playing I, of late? I, I think <clears throat> during this run, he's been really good. Yeah. Like, uh, but everyone's been really, really good, especially those six guys. Like, there's been some, some, there's subtle little things that they're doing that probably go completely unnoticed, right? Mm -hmm. Subtle little passes, making sure their sticks are in the right, taking away something that looks like it's there but it's not like making making the uh the opposing player have to make a decision of oh I can't do that I have to do something else right putting putting the offensive player into a bad place like that's what they've been able to do so effectively over this whole streak right um the upgrade on C that's tough man because oh, I've looked, and I'm sure everyone's looked at Cap Friendly and kind of tried to find first the upgrade, right? So what what does the upgrade look like? But then what does that cap hit look like? So right, it, it's it's a very very short list, and I don't know if it can get done. Like you're to get the player that you want that's an upgrade, you're you're giving up more than I think you should for a player that's an up, a, a slight upgrade with CC. The one that popped up, and I saw it a couple of weeks ago, was Sean Walker. Yeah, I know. He's 5'11". He's my size. Like, he's not a big guy. So, like, I know he's been somebody they look at and go, oh, well, that, that's an upgrade. But is it? And he's a left shot guy. I don't, I don't think it is. Like, CeCe's, is he overly physical? No, but he, there is a physical part of his game where he, he competes – in uh, in in tough areas, you can't say that he shies away from the physicality in a game. No. And wa watch him, watch his first pass. I mean, it's tape to tape, most of the every single time. That that's his game. Um, yeah, I just I don't know what you're looking for for an upgrade on CC. It's he's a right shot, I should say. Okay, well, I it's, that up. it's I I. And there's always the chance when you bring someone in, it disrupts the chemistry of what you already have. And I, I just think the, in this case, it has to be something very special. And I just don't think that special player is out there. 
Uh, the request by Holland to see these deep, deep pairings. Az so. just floated that out no, there. No, I trying. think I think that's uh, that's coaches' room banter after the game, and you know these are these these guys sitting in a room and talking about certain like what if scenarios. Mm-hmm. This is what they came up with. That's why we saw uh, everything being shuffled around a little bit. Taco with this one really quickly before we get to more clips from the Honda Center as the orders win 5-3. Tommy, quick question. What do teams do with the hats after a hat trick? I'm assuming they get trashed due to hygiene reasons. They do not, Taco. Uh, I know the Oilers donate them to uh, shelters and places that can uh, distribute the hats. Usually the guy signs them all, too, doesn't he? That's a cool thing. Yeah, Yeah, A guy signs them all, and then they donate them. Yeah. Yeah, so they get donated, which is uh, pretty sweet. Uh, not all of them are greasy and ready and fit for the garbage can, but uh, I actually, I've heard a lot of stories of people buying a new hat at a game, and then there's a yeah. hat trick, and they're like, oh, it, my, oh God, my God, I spent 50 bucks on yeah. this thing. Time for a new one, I guess. But <laughs> no, not all teams, Taco, uh, they don't throw them in the garbage. A lot of them do get donated to places that can use them and distribute them properly, and like Gage just said, a uh, good chunk of them, maybe all of them, get signed depending on how many. All right, Zach to come. Who is next for us to uh, listen and watch? The man who has a beard that I can only dream of having, <laughs> Matthias Ackholm. Does your team win this hockey game without the play of Calvin Pickard, especially early in this game? It's definitely in jeopardy, that's for sure. He played a really good game. I think he um, – Stood on his head in the first, especially, and, and, and played really well throughout. So um, great job on him. I think he's been unbelievable ever since he got um, called up, and, and he does his job perfectly. So um, we, we know that uh, he's capable of this. What do you think the line of Evander Kane, Leon Dreisaitl, and Corey Perry bring in terms of if you're the opposition, how do they make it tough on you tonight? Well, first of all, they're big bodies, right? And then they, they can grind you down low, and it's hard to get the puck from them. And uh, we know Leon is one of the best in the league to, to protect the puck, but um, those other two can really be big bodies and, and protect it down there, and, and that calls for long shifts. And as a defenseman, then uh, you're chipping for air. So that's um, they played really well tonight. Obviously, Kaner with three goals, but I thought that whole line was really good. You played some big series against Corey Perry over the years. You played against him a long time. What's it, you know, what's it like? And why don't the refs ever see all the stuff he does? <laughs> I mean, it's part of the game, right? I mean, you got to be on that line. I, I feel like I um, usually play close to that line too, where it's a uh, borderline penalty or not, or, or otherwise you, you got to try to find something um, that's an edge for yourself or, or little things here and there. So um, as long as you keep it, yeah, he's really good at it, and that's probably why he's been so successful so successful in this league as well. So credit to him. He's, he knows where to take advantage of some, some little details that makes a, a big difference in the end. So are you saying you're deserving of some more penalties maybe? Or, what? <laughs> or maybe I'm just saying I'm good to stay in just below that line. I don't know. You're, you take the pick. A um, lot of changes to the deep pairs tonight. What did you, what did you think? What did you make of them tonight? Yeah, I mean, we, we flipped out a little bit. I felt it was half the game with the C's, and then I was half the game with Bush back again. So, um, yeah, I thought we, uh, we, we, we didn't have the first that we kind of wanted. So um, they switched it around a little bit, and we got going and, and, and played back to, to what we can. So it's nice to, to try out something different, and we know that come down to playoff time or, or what have you, there might be injuries or what whatnot. So it's, it's nice to try. Um, Try some different guys, and, and we've had the same pair. It's been incredible. We've had the same um, knock on woods here. Uh, everyone stayed healthy, so we've had the same pairs for about three months. And uh, it was it's always good sometimes to, to try something new and, and, and get you thinking again. What's the adjustment period like? Because you and CC have played together like 14 minutes. It's uh, at even strength all year. Like that, That's got to be a huge change after playing with them for so long. It is. You, you get to – that's kind of like where we've – become now I think all three pairs is kind of where you don't really have to look or think you know what the other guy's going to do at certain moments right and um, it's it's a great feeling to have because you know and you don't have to think you, you don't have to uh, you can dictate instead of reacting so um, I think that's where you want to be with with your partner but uh, at the same time I mean, that's what I'm trying to get to here is that everybody's not healthy all the time right so so to be able to um, have a game where we can try it and, and, and see and, and get a feel for it. Uh, and who knows down the road, they might go back to it. You didn't have the greatest first period. What, what went on before the second period? You guys came out a lot harder and stronger. I think this group has really 
come together in that sense where we know when we play good and bad and, and I think nobody in here felt like we were um, even close to our potential in the first and, and then when that feeling is it's uh, usually a response from this group and, and we've had that a lot lately and um, nothing different tonight I thought we, we came out a lot um, harder in the second and set the tone all right there is Matthias Ekholm knocking on wood talking about those D pairings and uh I don't know. What'd you make of his response to that? Um, he, he said he, it's it's nice to 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 try something new. Um, you never know what's going to happen. Uh, the the other thing is is having the continuity with your partner. Uh, and he he alluded to it, and this I think this is a a good lesson in life too. Is you, you don't like to think too much. Like you like mm -hmm. everything set up, and I kind of alluded to it a little bit where. You know where your partner's going to be. You don't right. think. You don't think. Okay, what do I got to? It's it's it, your your game comes more instinctual in certain situations. And what most is important that is you can just react, right? Because you have that that base of 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 communication of knowing where your partner's going to be and how you support each other in in certain situations. And it takes time to develop that essentially that trust with mm -hmm. your with your partner. So he alluded to that but he also said that the the importance to to learn that with other people too, which is I mean that he's a the guy's a stud. Yes he is. <laughs> he's just a good dude. Yeah. Well spoken and uh good pickup last year for the Oilers. All right. Zach to come. One last bit of audio and video to get to. Let us know what we're going to see in here. Well, this next voice is the voice of Coach Garlic or oh, here we Mr. Go. Knobloch. Look at you tonight. How well they would be in the offensive zone, controlling pucks, um, you know, not being able to knock off and, you know, finding uh, each other in the slot and just being able to possess the puck and down there and make some plays. And I, I really like that part of their game. And obviously the contributions offensively and the goal department was, was nice to have. As your team was feeling out uh, this game, especially early on, can you maybe talk about the impact of Calvin Pickard's play, especially in that first half of that first period? Yeah, well, we weren't uh, ready to play, um, you know, our best at the beginning, and they came out hard, and they were really um, focused and really played well, I thought. And, you know, as the game went on, we built up our game and definitely in the second period was our best but uh, we had some breakdowns and we had, were under pressure especially in the first period and picks came up with some huge saves so we're very very happy with him that's a couple times he's played well in this building Chris, uh, Tony asked about the deep there sorry the forward uh, changes what about the deep pairings what did you make of, of the way they played tonight yeah, I think it'll be something I'll look at um, on the video and see what they, uh, how it, um, they played out. You know, overall, I thought they had a strong game, and anytime we got in trouble, maybe the forwards weren't helping them out. Often, you see a defenseman make a mistake, and it's usually um, compounded by something else. But overall, I thought they played a strong game. You made some changes later in the game, flipping a couple pairings around. Why do? Why did you do that? Well, the one was, um, you know, Eki and uh, Bush were playing back together, and I think we kept the other ones the same. But, you know, I think we're needing a goal, and those two have been our most offensive group. So it was just, so, you know, it made perfect sense to put those two together. This morning you didn't want to do anything too drastic. Did you Did you find it maybe it was a little bit too drastic as, as the guys tried to get their footing early on? I don't think so. I, our forwards are... Always, we're always mixing up our lines. The forwards are always playing with different guys, and the, there's more um, defensemen. The chemistry is more important, and it is better often that they they stick together more than forwards do. But I think it's important that they play with other partners and mix it up a little bit once in a while. Tenth career hat trick for Evander Kane, eighth in the regular season. Can you talk about the importance of having a guy like Kane going offensively right now? Well, right now is a perfect time. Um, you look at our past uh, three games, and we've had minimal scoring if uh, 97 or 29 has not been involved. And uh, we needed other guys to step up. And, you know, if you're going to pick somebody, it would be probably Evander Kane to step up. And, you know, he played a heck of a game tonight um, in all areas. 
All right, there is Oilers head coach Chris Knobloch giving Evander Kane some praise. Kane, uh, deservedly so, by the way, 16, 17, and 18th goals of the season for him. Good to see him kind of getting back into the goal column and picking up some points. Interesting thing that we heard from Chris Knobloch when he was asked about the defense by Daniel Nugent Bowman, uh, saying that there were some issues from the forwards and it compounded things on the back end. I was like... Oh, yeah. We we haven't heard a, a a shot across the bow from him in a in a media scrum as Said of it yet. Like so in a really subtle way. Yeah. So good. Yeah. yeah. You know what? Good. Light the fire in different ways. You gotta you gotta learn how to maybe push some buttons and you know that if you really think about it, Tommy. Now the the starts of the Oilers games, aside from I would say the. Uh, the Golden Knights over the past six, seven, they haven't been great. No, they haven't. No, you know, we've, there's, there's, I think before that you had some really good hard nose shift with, uh, with the Nugent Hopkins, McDavid, and Hyman line where it almost looked like a power play. But other than that line throughout the whole forward group, it wasn't on the same level. So maybe it's just a coach saying, you know what, I got to, I got to make sure we're ready to start games because it's going to get to the point where if you're not ready to start, you won't be able to finish. Start that tomorrow against the LA Kings. Tougher opponent, certainly, than the Anaheim Ducks. Let's get to the player of the game brought to you by Damon Bunting, REMAX Elite. Damon Bunting, consistent top producing realtor in Greater Edmonton and among REMAX realtors. He and his team would love to help you find that right home or make the move from your current home. Community driven, he understands what it takes to make a difference in our city. Check him out, DamonBunting.com. Visit his Instagram at Damon Bunting Real Estate. Zach to come, you have the honors of player of the game. Tonight's play of the game goes to Evander Kane for getting the hat trick. I think. He deserved it. He played a fantastic game for the Oilers, uh, was able to pot three goals. One of them was on the empty net, but he deserved it. I he mean, wanted that one. he wanted it bad, yeah, he and they put him out there, and he got the job done. Uh, as it was said uh, in those interviews, 10th career hat trick, 8th of the regular, in regular season, yep. and it's beautiful to see. There you go. Great shot, mm-hmm. that first goal, too. That was a great it's shot. fantastic. Uh, all cause of uh, vintage Corey Perry with the Katie Perry line. The Katie uh, Perry yeah, line. If hey. they got, you got to keep them together for at Love least that. one more game with, with that moniker. That's really good. <laughs> all right, uh, Gager, the Oilers take on the LA Kings tomorrow. Third back-to-back set of the season. It's crazy to, to think they've only had two back-to-backs. What do you want to see from this team as they try to wrap up the quick three-game road trip with another victory. Um, established dominance over a team that's below you. That's another thing you say. Keep the teams below you, below you, right? You don't want to give this... Uh, the, the. It's going to be a different, a hungry LA Kings team. You know, going up against the team that knocked them out mm-hmm. of the playoffs. New coach, wanting to get things back on track. Uh, we're going to see, a, I think... I could say, Tommy, we're going to see the same type of intensity level that we saw against the... Uh, the Golden Knights. I like that. I, and that was a real enjoyable game to watch. So good Saturday night hockey. The Oilers now five points up on the LA Kings, 61 points through 47 games. The Oil improved to 30, 16, and one on the year. LA, meanwhile, three, five, and two in its last 10. They won their last game. They are eight, nine, and six on home ice, a 23, 15, and 10 record, good for 56 points. We'll see. If the Oilers can spoil the party for Jim Hiller, who takes over behind the bench for Todd McClellan. We are back on the air tomorrow, 6.30 p.m. with the Oil Stream pregame show. And we are live on location. Watch party at Boston Pizza Westgate, right beside West Edmonton Mall. Uh, I think we're going to see Joaquin at some point. (laughs) Lieutenant Eric, Dusty Nielsen, (laughs) myself, YouTube Trev, maybe even Zach to come. Uh, we shall see Matthew Awanek, of course, too. So that'll do it for the Oil Stream Post Game Show. Edmonton 5 3 winners over the Anaheim Ducks. For Zach to come, YouTube Trev, who's in house, and the one and only Joaquin Gage. I'm Tom Gazzola saying thanks for tuning in. Smash that thumbs up button. Have yourselves a lovely night. Talk to you tomorrow.